Hello, welcome to the second podcast from the EANTC multi-vendor interoperability event. I'm standing here in an empty ENTC office in Berlin, and only a couple of weeks ago, it almost seems unreal right now, we had more than 30 people roaming around and working together to prepare the hot staging for the upcoming interoperability showcase. Since the event has been rescheduled to the summer and the conference from Upper Side will hopefully take place end of June, beginning of July, we are already releasing a couple of demos that we recorded live during the hot staging right now. Before we get to today's demo, I'd like to reintroduce some of the basic aspects of the interoperability event if you, in case you have not seen yesterday's podcast. So we had 16 vendors participating this time, as shown on the screen. Uh, vendors that are coming from very different areas. And uh, as you can see, most of the vendors are focused on the transport network for SDN and MPLS. Of course, there are test tool vendors as well. There are clocking vendors and uh, there are also Access and Edge supporting manufacturers. So with this great group of vendors, we have carried out a wide range of test scenarios, especially covering SDN, eVPN services, segment routing, SDN orchestration. We also covered uh, advanced clocking scenarios for 5G precision timing protocol support, and we covered FlexE, flexible Ethernet as well. Now, today we're going to look at the SDN orchestration part, and specifically at uh, NetConf and Young, together with the help from a couple of participating vendors. So if you look at the topology diagram, you can see this uh, small area on the very top which has no background color, and that's actually one of the most important areas in the multi-vendor interoperability event this year. So you can see SDN controllers and you can see PSAP controllers, which are um, used to download uh, device configurations, to provision the devices, to monitor the devices, to do performance monitoring, and also to set up segment routing tunnels and end-to-end -end path through the PSAP controllers. So today we're going to focus specifically on the NetConf Young Multi-Vendor Interoperability demo. And I'm really happy to hand over the mic to uh, James coming from Nokia to Jan Lindblad from Cisco, and to Michael Bridges from Metaswitch. So over to you guys. Hi, I'm James coming from Nokia. And today we're going to show you eVPN service creation using NetConf and Yang on Nokia's SROS operating system. Hi, this is Mike Bridges from Metaswitch, uh, taking part in the same demo, but running the Metaswitch NOS toolkit. And uh, I'm John Lindblad from Cisco, and I'll be manning the NSO, Cisco NSO uh, orchestrator and controller. But before we jump into the demo, I wanted to spend a few minutes on explaining what this NetConf and Yang interoperability testing is uh, happening here at Antic at all. So basically, we have three different levels of uh, NetConf and Yang testing that's going on here. First, we have some very basic NetConf and Yang, where basically we just, the controllers, they just read some state, they read the full config and make a small configuration change somewhere, just to verify that some sort of basic connectivity is there and manageability. Then for, for those to up to some higher levels, we have the service provisioning, which provisions a complete service. Everything goes in, everything goes out. And it includes a service model here in the controller, so you have a high level intent that's being mapped down to the network uh, or to the device level here. And the whole thing here is then provisioned as a network-wide transaction. So if anything goes wrong, nothing happens anywhere. And if this service is activated, it's activated across the whole network at the same time. And then if we want to go real fancy, uh, we have this multi-domain, multi-vendor orchestrated service activation where you have one domain on the left here, which is an L2 domain, uh, pretty much like this one. And on the right hand, we have one more like this, but it's an eVPN sitting over here. And then on, on top of the controllers here, we have an orchestrator that is sending down the commands to each of the controllers that now is the time to provision this. And the way it works in NetConf and Yang is that it starts with some intent, something very small, an idea that somebody wants to have a connection from here to there. And then you send this command down to the controller asking, requesting the service to be provisioned. And the controller will then figure out how do I provision a service like this by computing, by allocating, by querying the topology, by querying things in the network maybe to see how will I realize this intent in terms of what I have available in the network right now. And then it's using NetConf uh, to provision these devices. And here we are testing this network-wide transactional management so that we provision all devices as a single transaction, either all or nothing happens. 
if you look at the intent, this is the actual intent we are using. It is just two lines for each one. There's no IP addresses. There's no details about route distinguishers or anything. So you just say that I want to have a connection from here to there or from Detroit to Frankfurt. And it's the controller that will need to decide how do I realize this in terms of the equipment I have available. And uh, then we have the topology that describes connection details uh, so that the controller can f make sensible decisions about how to do this. And many things are not in the topology either. They have to be computed or allocated and so on on the fly. And then uh, once this has been uh, allocated and computed, the controller will send out one configuration to device one, another one to device two, and they are typically from different vendors, so they have different ways of expressing this particular service, and the roles that these devices have might be slightly different. And this can be any number of devices, obviously. So each of these devices, they expose a Yang interface for their API, and we are then using NetConf to provision the services on top of this. Okay, so now we're going to talk through the actual demonstration here. And to do this, we have the controller here, this is the Cisco NSO. Uh, and this is going to utilize the information it gathers from the provider edge routers. So the one on the left here being the Nokia SR, and then the one on the right here being the MetaSwitch NOS Toolkit. They are both exposing their Yang models up to the controller, which it's collected dynamically. And it's then going to take that intent information, convert that into an XML-based configuration, and send that directly down to each device using NetConf and Yang. And then you'll see the traffic from the Spirant Test Center on the left, communicate with the Spirant Test Center over on the right. So let's talk you through doing that now. So here we have the Cisco NSO, and we're going to perform a dry run of the service configuration here. So this shows you uh, the configuration that is going to be sent down uh, from the controller to each device. So this is the MetaSwitch device, and then the configuration it's derived from the Yang models for the MetaSwitch device. And here's the Nokia device with the same approach. And if we look here, this is the actual intent that we're utilizing here. And it simply says create an eVPN connection from MetaSwitch to Nokia. So if we actually deploy the service now, it's now deployed it on both devices successfully. And this will either work uh, entirely or not at all. If there's an error, none of the services will provision on any of the devices. So if we have a look at the uh, Nokia model-driven CLI, we can now see that we have a service, show service ID 48. We have a, an eVPN configured service here that is shown in administrative state up, operational state up and the interface that faces that Spirant test center for traffic generation is also up. And we can see the configuration that has been provided matches that that we anticipated on the controller. So we'll configure a service, EPLS 48. And the configuration here now exists and matches that that you saw in the dry run. Okay, so I'll now, sh I'll now show you similar things for MetaSwitch. So on the MetaSwitch device, you can see that we, uh, we're we running ConfD here, and so we've had some configuration injected by uh, Jan from his controller. And if I show you now this eVPN instance, it exists. We can see it's operationally up, and we can see the, the interface that uh, Jan's config has bound into it was ETH1 on our device. So now if we look back at the uh, Cisco NSO controller, uh, we're going to undeploy uh, the configurations we just made on all of the devices. This is exactly what it's going to send to the devices. You see there's a minus sign there for it's going to take these configuration lines away. And if we run that on the devices, we see that's successful. Then none of the undeploy would work and the service would remain on both services. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope it was insightful and we look forward to seeing you back in the coming days with many more videos covering the uh, segment routing parts, covering uh, TILFA and SRV6 and uh, clocking and other aspects of the interoperability showcase. Thank you. <laughs>